Space. The final frontier. These are the voyages of a new Trekkie. My five year mission to search out Star Trek media, to seek out our fans and merchandise, to boldly go where no fan has gone before. Greetings and salutations. Welcome to another episode of the show. So, yeah, I was getting a bit of research. So, um, yeah, we're talking about another episode, and this is actually the final episode of, like, the, after this episode is the final episode of the first season of Star Trek. In this case, we're talking about the episode, City on the Edge of Forever. This was the 28th episode of the, sh of the first season of Star Trek, and it was directed by Joseph Pinnevich. This episode was written by Helen Ellison, um, and it was also written by DC Fontana, uncredited, and Jean L. Kuhn, uncredited. And, who and let's just say, can you all guess who did the cinematography for this episode? Why, of course, it was G- it was Jay Finnerman. Because one thing you're going to be notice a lot in some episodes of Star Trek, good old Jerry Finnerman always seems to be the behind the cinematographer. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and talk about this episode. <laughs> this episode, Dr. McCoy, he ends up actually, um, injecting himself with a dangerous drug, and then, basically, he's gone a bit loopy, and he ends up transporting himself, uh, to a mysterious, onto a mysterious planet, and end up going, like, back in time, and what happens is the Federation ends up no longer existing, so, both uh, Kirk and Spock, they have to, to go back to around the same time, um, like, McCoy is end up going to end up showing up, and, like, restore things, because they don't, the Enterprise and the Federation sh will not exist. So, but along the way, during that time, when they're in the past, Kirk ends up falling for a social worker, and basically they're trying to figure like, okay, what do we need to do to make sure that if we don't cause any int interactions, that our future will eventually happen. And compared to the last episode, which I thought, okay, it was pretty bad. Um, this one, I actually think this one's actually pretty great. The dramatic mo elements of it are great. The idea of going back to the um, 1930s New York. I especially, here's the thing, I especially love it when, um, like, Trek, when it goes to, like, say, areas when it is just, like, say, a time period when it's, like, not all of their current time so that they, it can feel like a fish out of water or they can interact with others who, like, you know, different eras and all that. So I think that at times when they do that, it is pretty cool, honestly. And, and honestly, I actually think this one is pretty, really good. It's really damn good. Um, this episode has a bit of, like, say, like, say, like, um, references to World War events, like, say, supposedly, uh, like, say, since, like, say, McCoy ends up interfering, he ends up causing, like, like, what, one thing that ends up leading to happen is the Nazis are able to, um, go into outer space. And, yeah, um, I gotta say, like, say, for, especially for Star Trek episode, the idea of going back, 
and like they went to their own accidentally causing changes in the past is pretty cool and the fact they like, say you know like their whole idea of them whatever they're supposed to do is not to like interfere oh and i also forgot to say who is in the cast uh joan collins as sister edith keller john Harmon as rodent paul baylor as the policeman david l ross as lieutenant as lieutenant galloway so um I gotta say that, along with like say the like use of the cameras, the way the since like you know this one takes place in the past. Um, I gotta say like say the humor like in the fact like say okay they are constantly having to say things like how okay, uh Kurt Spock is like like how he has the ears he they have to explain to a police officer like say. Uh, my fellow friend here, he, he's Chinese, he, uh, ended up having an ear accent, and then constantly saying, like, say, well, Mr. Spock is a peculiar man, and all that. So, um, I like that. I like the fact that they're constantly having to tell stories, and all that, to try to, like, say, keep it so that others don't realize, oh, um, what is going on here, and all that. So, yeah, I kind of like those ideas. And I actually kind of think it's pretty cool, and the fact that, you know, of course, of the episode, Kurt ends up falling for, um, for Ida. I actually kind of think that's pretty cool, and the fact that, you know, like, you know, and that a man from the future falling for the past. I mean, by today's standards, it is a bit of a cliche, but here it works, and a way you kind of feel tragedy for Kurt, and the fact that, you know, he did not really get, he did not really get to say, hey, this is how I feel for you. And at the same time, you also realize, like, say, like how, like how she ends up being a symbol for peace in a way, um, supposedly her idea of peace would end up causing the A-bomb. And, yeah, I kind of like this episode. I actually think this is pretty good. I like the acting, I like the use of the cinematography, I like the fact that, like, say, the way Spock is able to have to use, um, bit of things from the time period to make a computer to try to figure, like, okay, here is what's going to happen several years from now and all that, so, and honestly, I think this episode pretty much holds up. I think it's entertaining. I like the themes of, like, say... Like, whatever it's, like, say, trying not to get involved in the past, but the idea of falling in love, um, I actually like all these ideas. I think they're, it's actually a pretty good episode. And, yeah. Appa oh, and apparently, like, say, like, when this episode was coming out, there was a bit of, like, say, CBS, they were a bit concerned about Kirk saying the, uh, the line of, let's get the hell out of here. Um... Well, by today's standards, you feel like say, "Oh, that's just nothing," but by the, remember, this is the sixth. And back when this episode came out in nineteen sixty-seven, the CBS was trying to say, so, "Um, yeah, we can you know remember censorship and all that back in that time period. It was a lot different, but yeah. Um, that's a bit of a history lesson to it. And then Gene Roddenberry said, like, "Say, look." What would you say during this time period? What do you feel like? What is the best meaty line that can be used? So, yeah. I gotta say, this episode is really good. What are your thoughts are on the city on the edge of tomorrow? On the, I mean, the edge of forever. Sorry about that. Um, thank you for watching, and I'll most definitely see you next time. See you later. <laughs>